Hello dear friends, I am making this short video today to share with you a beautiful reflection by Professor Massimo Viglione of the Confederazione Triari, which I will leave the link in the description box. It's a beautiful reflection for these holy days that are coming now. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday. Jesus, public opinion, our days. A little reflection for this Holy Wednesday in the darkest moment of human history. Jesus enters Jerusalem on the Sunday before Passover, welcomed in triumph by a large part of the resident people and by those who were beginning to arrive for the sacred feast. They welcome him as if he were a king, although he enters on a poor donkey and without any pretense of taking the throne from Herod, nor of causing trouble in Rome. Five days later, that same people manifested to him all the irrepressible hatred of him, shouting in the praetorium the fateful sentence of death by crucifixion and asking for the release of Barabbas. These public condemners were certainly largely the same who had welcomed him as a king the previous Sunday, and among them, in all likelihood, were also those who had received from Jesus miracles, physical or moral healing, their own or of a loved one. How can one explain such a betrayal such a radical and instantaneous mutation, such an infinite ingratitude. The Gospel and many private revelations testify to the tireless activity of the Pharisees to persuade the people to condemn him and thus support their decision to eliminate the Messiah. They, in fact, had wanted to kill him for a long time and were looking for the opportunity and on Wednesday, they gathered to find the most suitable system. As Easter was near, they feared a revolt of the people that increased daily in the city, which would have ruined the party, and above all, get Rome to intervene. But at the same time, they no longer wanted to postpone the murder of the just one. Now he was in Jerusalem. Now he was in their hands. Therefore, it was necessary to work to the utmost to make the people change their opinion, to make them ready and in favor of the crime, indeed, to make them directly complicit in the crime. In short, to win the general consensus with which to concretely oblige Pilate to accept the fate accompli. And as we know, Things went exactly like this. On Friday, the recalcitrant governor of Tiberius will have to agree to the murder of the righteous in spite of him, forced by the obligation to avoid the increasingly looming popular revolt. This revolt was achieved through what we can define the manipulation of Jewish public opinion of the time by a sect of powerful traitors. A manipulation so radical, convincing, invasive, that it pushed the Jewish people not only to the crime of the just one and of their benefactor, who only a few days earlier they publicly praised, but to the self-curse in a sort of infernal delirium. May his blood fall on us and on our children. Matthew 27 Guareschi also says what has just been said with his brilliant holy humor when Jesus himself replies to Don Camillo who objected to him that public opinion is important. Jesus said, I know well, Don Camillo, it is public opinion that put me on the cross. It is good to stop for a moment to make a current reflection. 
because only the spiritually blind can still fail to perceive the fact that today we are reliving both first and foremost as a church but also as a society the reproduced mirror of the events of Holy Week in Jerusalem in the most decisive days of all human history the powerful especially when they have a specific sect moved by infamous and infernal intentions inevitably need popular support in order to operate heavily to divert the course of events according to their plans in order to have the general consensus of public opinion the pharisees of the time lacking the means of today had to conquer it by going personally to talk for days with the popular exponents to manage the plot the pharisees of today who operate not in an asian city but on a national and world level have other means immensely more invasive than a squat pharisee who stops you on the street or swoops into your home they have their daily pounding voice inside every house inside every brain inside every heart and they conquer and direct souls with the invasive power of collective fear economic blackmail the unscrupulous use of habit and conformism of the subject masses the three days we have before us thursday friday and holy saturday constitute today as never before the mirror of what is about to happen to us as humanity almost 2000 years after those days and in the immediate next few years it will be more and more like this until the precise repetition mutatis mutandis obviously of the mechanism of the passion and death of our lord jesus christ mirror reflected as already said both in the catholic church and in the once christian society each of us is called to make a definitive choice of field the days we live no longer allow space for moderates and of the professionals to the crafty of all kinds and types because everything falls apart and when everything falls into history exactly as in Jerusalem in those days the hour of demons strikes who hate moderates and professionals perhaps even more than their own extremist followers although both categories are absolutely precious and complementary to them supporting each other in the implementation of the satanic plan in history these are the days in which each of us will have to decide whether to be part of public opinion and follow its lead leaders the pharisees of today who with their media political economic and military tools as well as intellectual ones guide the army of their slaves to convince the masses that jesus is a demon while Barabbas deserves honor and salvation, or to follow Jesus Christ and the truth in the Calvary of the passion and death of an entire world. The former will win for a day or two and then go to their eternal destiny. The others will seem to succumb, but only to rise again in the eternal light, that light immortalized forever in the shroud and become a living part of the triumph of God. Others will have to assist under the cross with Mary most holy, the pure one par excellence, and the redeemed one par excellence. Or they will have to hide and then rebuild the church and Christianity. Now, Thursday and Friday, it is time for prayer, retreat, union with Christ who suffers and dies for us, the moment of unspeakable suffering. Then comes Holy Saturday, which is the moment of confident expectation of a restful and soothing pain. 
Finally, for those who have been able to suffer, resist, and wait without betraying, the resurrection will come. But in order to be able to rise again, it is necessary to die. To themselves, to the world, to this hell on earth, and if God asks, even definitively, those who will know how to do it, if God wills, will see not only their Passover towards eternal life, but also, God willing, in this same earthly life. Because time is running out, and these are the final days of an entire era, of an entire world. On earth it became dark, but a little later the light conquered all darkness and all death. Let us live this Easter Tritium in the darkest days of human history with these sentiments of hopeful and trusting pain, a reflection of those three days in Jerusalem almost 2,000 years ago, by defining our personal choice of field, either with Barabbas and the deceivers and idolaters, or with Jesus Christ, way, truth, and life, towards the resurrection of divine and earthly light. Thank you for listening to this beautiful meditation on these most important days for us. Thanks also to all my subscribers and all those who have helped me and encouraged me to keep making videos. I am so grateful for all your support and mostly for the kindness you have shown to me. Please subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And if you like this reflection, please share with others. We all need to hear this. God bless you and keep you and may you have a most blessed Holy Week and Easter Sunday.